Thank you for listening to Depictions Media Radio. Okay, I'm ready when you are. Okay, we'll get started in five, four, three. Welcome back, everyone. Um, we're back again um, today with a old friend as a day um, of... Go go t- I always say that wrong. I always say say your company name wrong as a day. So, um, why don't you say say the name of of your business for us? Sure, Go Go <laughs> Telugo Creative. Yeah. Oh, it's the, it's the Telugo. I always get it wrong on the first try. <laughs> anyway, um, the reason why we brought you back is because hey, you're a branding expert and. Um, I know marketing is is, is is it kind of falls under under that umbrella, but branding is is more specialized to our message, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, it's a big big part of it. Yeah, so um, so we brought you back, and you because you have some tips for people that um, as business owners that they need to pay attention to with their branding and their message, right? Mm-hmm. So. Thank you. I'm so happy to be back. Um, and I know this is a, a very uncertain time for many entrepreneurs and business owners. And so I'm happy to provide some tips and things that people can do uh, so that they find their uh, strength instead of focusing on things that are not going well. Let's focus on things that we can do to power up. So that when everything's ready to go back, we're actually stronger than ever before. And that in and of itself is a, is a great message, you know. So, so let's get started. Tip number one. Yeah. So my very first tip is for entrepreneurs and uh, business owners to take this time to pause, reflect, and connect. And so by that, what I mean is that you will build a more powerful brand and business by using this time to pause and reflect. Don't panic. Don't go into panic mode like, oh, my God, what's going to happen? And then do something crazy and screw up all the hard work that you've done um, or just change your brand completely. You know, this really take this time to pause, reflect and connect. Hold your ground And use this time to rethink things. Connect with your customers and clients and staff. This is really the time to reconnect with people and check in to see how they're doing. What are they dealing with? What are the specific things that could be going better for them or they need help with? Because perhaps in that could reside the solutions that you could provide for them. So one of the things that I'm suggesting to all of my clients to do is to pick 5, 10, 20, 50 of your clients or customers and get on the phone with them. Not by emailing, but get on the phone and do a 10, 15 minute survey and go through some questions that are really interesting for you to know in terms of what they're dealing with. And find out what they want, um, what they're concerned about, how their goals have shifted. Uh, It's really best to get it from them firsthand rather than speculate as to what's going on for them. Okay, so I get two two questions around this. Um, One is, um, is... Should, should we keep that conversation kind of on, more on the friendly, informal side, or should we like make it formal? And you know, how how should that work out? Yeah, that's a great question. So you know, it all depends on your relationship with this person. Uh, and sometimes I've seen it done in um, in both both ways. You know, the first call is a friendly check in. As to, you know, how are you doing? I want to check in. How are you holding up with everything? And hey, by the way, I'm actually really interested in what's going on with you and your business. And I would love to take 10 or 15 minutes of your time to run you through some questions. Would it be okay if we set a time to go through that together? And 
people are interested to talk about themselves and, you know, share their concerns, uh, especially if they find you as a trusted resource and they enjoy talking to you. So um, that would be that would be the scenario if you feel like, you know, you don't want to just jump on a call and feel like you're calling them because you want stuff for you. Um, so, you know, you 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 lead with the compassion first um, because we all do care what's going on for others. Um, and then during that talk, you can ask them about those questions. Or if you're really connected and close and you're always in conversation with each other, then you could potentially send a text message or an email to say, hey, you know, last time we talked, you said this and this and that. I put together uh, a few questions. It'll probably just take 15 minutes or 20 minutes of your time max. I'd love to go through these questions with you because I want to get more clarity about what's going on with you because I feel like other entrepreneurs or business owners are going through the same thing. And I really want to get to the heart of it. So do you mind if I, we jump on a call sometime next week? And, you know, so it's just a lot less formal because of that relationship. Right. But you're still doing your survey to find out the core of what they're going through. So definitely keep it keep it heart filled and um, in, in, in a caring mode. Mm hmm. Absolutely. hundred percent. This is the time to connect with each other mm -hmm. person to person. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so let's move on with number two then. OK, so the second tip uh, that I'm suggesting that entrepreneurs do is if you've done your the exercise of values, mission, vision, this is a great time to review them. If you haven't done them, this is the perfect time to do them. And if you don't know where to get started, go online. There's a bunch of resources for you to come up with your core values, for you to create your mission statement and your vision statement. And for those that have done it, um, then you know that this exercise represents your essence. And no matter what's happening in the market, that is these three things are the fundamentals of your brand and where you stand. So take this time. See if you're still aligned with them if you did them a long time ago. If not, this is really a great time to tweak them. Um, that's how you're going to continue to build an authentic brand because as you shift, as the market shifts and now everything shifts together, you keep checking in on those uh, foundational elements and m you make sure that you're still aligned. Yes, this is still the same brand. We're still on the same mission. We still have the same vision as to what the kind of company that we want to build. Those things haven't changed. So you know you're on course. And at the same time or on the flip side, if things have changed and you now see new opportunities in the marketplace for you, this is the perfect time to tweak that vision statement because if the vision statement is different, your all of your goals come from there. So it's a great time to sit down with your team, with your staff, and um, revisit these three fundamental things. So, is is our business our business is it's in some respects is a living, growing thing that constantly keeps changing, right? Yes, absolutely. So, and the, and that's the reason why we want to keep doing the the these exercises over again, so that we mm -hmm. so that we stay uh, we we're we're keeping everything in alignment, right? Absolutely, exactly. Okay. Yes. All right. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, sometimes uh, I I think people forget that. Um, that their business is a growing entity and they need to uh, uh, um, keep that, keep that vision in mind is like, um, and so that they can keep, keep their business growing the way it's supposed to, the way that they really want the, the ultimate dream, right? Yeah, absolutely. So there's that. And I've also seen the case of um, constantly changing for the, for the sake of change. Mm -hmm. And not really having fundamental things that are guidelines as to when do I say yes? When do I say no? When do I know that I'm off course? And this is this is not the kind of thing that I should be spending my time on. 
And so, you know, Michael, I've seen it happen in both ways. Either we're just never changing because, you know, you can get used to the doing the same thing every day. You get in that comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Um, or, you know, as uh, curious, busy bee entrepreneurs that we are, the next shiny thing that pops up, it's like, ooh, squirrel, look over there. That's a cool thing. I'm going to go do that. And then that totally takes you off course of the main thing that you were set to do. And so that's also disruptive to business. And then you you wonder, oh, how come I'm not seeing the results that I, I hope to be seeing is because there isn't consistency or there's a lack of focus. Right. Okay. So um, number, this would be number three now. Number three. Yeah, I've got five tips. So number three is identify who you love working with. Now, this one is really important because it's the time to take you back to take a look at the 80-20 rule, right? So 80% of your revenue should be coming from 20% of the people that you work with, not the other way around. And so, again, this is the perfect time to take a look at who are the people who you would love, love, love to see more of, to work more with. Um, who are like really identify, like sit down and take a look at last year and say, well, who were the clients that I really enjoyed working with? Who paid me well? Who paid me fast? Who was a delight? Who actually made me be a better business because of the kind of standards they brought and they actually made us better? Because clients can do that, you know, clients can bring on Things where you step up and you're like, oh, yeah, I can deliver that for you. And all of a sudden you grow because of the standards that they brought and you want to meet them. And so who are those people? And I know that when we go through crisis, because I remember when 2008 happened and the market crashed and that was a huge ordeal. That was actually the time I started my business. (laughs) It was probably the most stupidest time to start your own business. But then now I look back, I'm like, look at that. It was an opportunity. And I bet you there's so many people right now who are thinking of that, starting their own business. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a a time of crisis is or or huge transformational change, like right now, as it's happened in the past, is not a time to say, I'm going to work with everyone. Because generally, I mean, we generally sometimes do that anyways in business. We target in business. We target everyone under the sun. And mm-hmm. we say anyone can be my target market. And now, especially when there is a crisis, anybody who's willing to pay me, sure, I'll take you up. I'm actually here to say that even during this time, stick to the 80-20 rule. Because it is a habit that you will carry on no matter what happens and how the market shifts. Again, this is a crucial time to take a closer look and define the attributes of who is your ideal target market and really grow the strength to say no. Because I know, really, I know as an entrepreneur, I know how hard it's to say when when you have to say no because you just know it's, it's the wrong fit. And I promise that when you start doing that, when you grow that muscle, it will generate positive revenue and positive results for you because you're only going to then start to attract the people that you love working with and that's going to shape your business. You're not going to waste your time working with those who may not appreciate you as much or may not you know, again, have the same attributes as those other clients do. So, yeah, concentrate on the ideals, even right. during a crisis. I, I like how you also put it, the, 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 put it like it's a muscle that we have to keep exercising to to ensure that, it, that, that our ability to discern who we should work with and who we shouldn't work with or what tasks we should take on or should not take on. Um, it's a muscle. I, I like that. Yeah. 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 You know, it's like any other habit. Uh, if I tell myself I'm only going to have a coffee, one coffee a day, 
Mm-hmm. And then in the afternoon, I am so called to the coffee shop or now I'm called to the coffee maker. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's the muscle that I've trained to say, nope, as a day, you know, you said it was going to be one a day. So please stick to one a day or, you know, any anything that we have where we would like to do it this way. But we just know better that we should do it another way. Right. That's the muscle we're exercising in business. Yes. Yes. And that is a very good muscle to have in business, especially if we want to follow that road to success, right? (laughs) Yes, yes. And yeah, you know, and actually, this is the cool thing, Michael, is that when you concentrate on the 80-20 rule, it Mm -hmm. might seem like you're leaving money on the table, but actually you're doing yourself a favor. It becomes easier over time. It might not be right away because, you know, out of five people, or 10 people, you may, you may say yes to five, or you may say yes to six or seven, and you think, oh, my God, those three people, I could have been X amount more in my pocket mm-hmm. in terms of revenue. But then over time, when you, you're putting your time towards working on the projects and with the clients or customers that matter, and then word of mouth and referrals come from the same sources, and you get more of the same kind, over time, you're making your life easier and your business is going to succeed much faster. Yes, that is very true. Um, it, it's, it's just an amazing, amazing thing when you when you work with the right group of people that, that just amazing things happen within your business. You know? Yes. <laughs> so, okay, uh, next tip then. All right, tip number four. And this one I love because it's so relevant to what's going on right now. So this tip is innovate from a place of core, not fear. So innovate from a place of core, not fear. This is a time for innovation, definitely, because it's a time, just like I said in that first tip, it's a time to pause, reflect, and connect. So you're you're stopping, you're reflecting, And hence comes the innovation of how can we do things differently? How can we embrace change and look at things with new eyes? Now, what I want you to know is your brand has not changed. Through the biggest economic downfalls and change, the brands that make it through are the ones that don't change the core of who they are. Mm -hmm. The dialogue, however, has changed. People are definitely in a new space, in a different space than they were before. And so what they need is a different conversation. So how how will you cater your messaging, your storytelling, your content in a way that resonates with them in in, in a way that you know they're going to hear you because they're in that new space? So again, my tip here is go back to the answers that you got from the survey. Remember in that tip one, I said, do a survey with your uh, customers and clients and get an understanding of what's going on for them. So go back and see what is it that they want? Who who can we really, really serve and innovate from that place? Because that is a place of core. You're not just falling into fear like, oh. We're drowning. We got to go innovate for the sake of drowning. But right. how do you actually find your strength in your core and you you innovate from that place? Because it's from that place that you know you're creating long term. It's not a short term reaction to what's going on in the marketplace. Right. The The short term reactions, they, they tend to they tend to flash in the pan and it's done. Right. When we... Yeah, they're they're short lived. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So we and in... again, it's really a way that takes you off your goals, off your mark. You know, you go back to your values, mission, vision, and is it part of your mi- mi- vision to do X? Mm-hmm. If it's not, then why bother doing it? Really, spend a little bit more time thinking, and be aligned with the core of what you're creating with your business. And innovation, I promise your innovation will come from that place, from a place of core. Yeah. So don't let the fear lead us and go go with the core, right? Yes, yes. Not okay. fear. 
<laughs> yes. Okay, and uh, last tip. All right. The last one is, and this one's very heart-based, uh, and it is be known as a brand that is of service. I love this one because this one's actually timeless. How can you be of service for your clients, customers, patients, audience, etc.? What do they need? It's one thing to make a profit. Well, I mean, we all want to make profit. Especially right now, a lot of us could be very profit, profit-oriented, profit-focused. But it's really another to be service-focused. What does it mean to you to be of service for others from a place of empathy and compassion? What does it mean to you to build a business around being of service where you exude empathy and compassion first? So how can you bring that conversation forward? This really allows you to create together with people, with your team, and build a meaningful brand. That's what it's all about at the end of the day. It's how are you making a difference? How are you creating impact? How are you being meaningful, even at a time when it's so uncertain? Because if you figure out how to do this one, this will allow you to build a higher brand loyalty. When people know that you truly care, they're going to remember it when the challenging times have passed. Because, yes, this one shall pass too. And when it does, they will go back and remember the people, the businesses, the brands that truly showed care. Mm -hmm. Not from a place of they were going to make profit if they showed they cared. But no, there was, there was true empathy in what they were doing. And I, and I really sense compassion coming from what they were doing. Right. Yeah, people re recognize when when you're putting compassion and empathy into into everything that you do, every service that you provide for them. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. It, it um in the long run, when when the crisis is actually over and we're back on on solid ground and we have have the the clear skies and all those other analogies for happy times. Mm -hmm. um, it, 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 that's what people are going to remember. They're going to remember those businesses that put that compassion and empathy into it. They're, they're going to yes. tend to forget the, the ones that, that um, well, I'm just going to do whatever it takes to, just to get a dollar so I can get by. They'll forget yeah. about them. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, thank you for coming on. I know, know that you, you, I've I've known you for quite a number of years, and you were like the you, whenever I think of branding, you're the number one person that I think of. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's very sweet. Thank you. <laughs> um, and I've and the thing is is um, because um, doing doing what we do and being the media, the media business, we see a lot of. I see a lot of your work and I see, see the businesses that, that work with you and how they succeed and they, they take the foreground in, in their industry. So you're, you're just a, a, a tremendous, um, tremendous force in, in our, um, in our business, in our business place here, in our community. Wow. Thank so, you. That, that's very special to say. Thank you. That mm -hmm. means a lot. Yeah. Well, I, uh, trying to thank you for being that person <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah that's awesome it's a pleasure really i'm i'm grateful for the work that i get to do um and it it all started with choice really i mean as as people we can do anything that we want and as cliche as that may sound mm -hmm. i i used to uh, be an employee and i worked in, a, in an ad agency and one day I just said, you know, I really want to make a difference. And I want to work with organizations that are making a difference in this world. They they move the society. They move things in the world. And um, it's sometimes not the huge corporations, but it's the small businesses 
that are doing really, really amazing things at a smaller scale, and it all adds up. And so I decided to venture out and start my own thing. And then the market crashed. <laughs> and then I got into an accident. And then I lost all of my files on my computer. And then my house flooded. Like challenges will come one after the other. Um, and the choice at the end remains what drives you forward. How dedicated are you to this mission that you're here to here to do? Because that stuff I find over all these years doesn't change. Um, challenges will come and go. Um, and the other thing, Michael, that I've learned is the power of community. You know, the the more we are connected on our all of our devices, um, the less we pay attention to the human beings that are around us as human beings. And uh, I've found it really interesting and eye-awakening that during this time right now, people are connecting with people more. And like, I mean, for instance, I mean, I'll, I'll share with you what I've done. I, I hadn't talked to my family members across the waters internationally in a really, really long time. Mm -hmm. And so now that we're all home, we've kind of made Sundays as our, like the family days where we all get on Zoom and we all chit chat from the youngest to the eldest. And it's, it's so lovely. And I just think, wow, why did we not do this earlier? Because we love each other so much and everybody lives so far from each other that we don't necessarily get to see each other. How come we haven't used these devices to connect? How come I did not take the time to call my clients and say, how are you doing? Not just wait for them to email or call to say, hey, as we want to do this next thing, you know, in our business, help us out, you know, yeah. but just really connecting from a place of human connection. Well, yeah. It's, it, it, sometimes it, it it takes it takes a um, a crisis or an emergency to to make these things happen. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. And you know, going back to uh, why I said I'm grateful is because this beautiful community that um, I have it just it wouldn't exist without all of the ups and downs. You know, and really reaching out to each other and being there for each other now more than ever before. Yeah. Yeah. So it, um, it, that's the other thing through the years you, you, you have, um, you have preached a lot of the same message about community and how important it is and you, you're truly living it. So, so thank you for enhancing our, um, on air and online community <laughs> with your tips today. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you to you yeah. and thank you to your listeners. I hope this uh, provides uh, value for even one person listening and that you take action on it. Okay. Hey, uh, before we go, um, the, uh, the best, best ways to, to contact you if anybody needs any further help. Yeah, absolutely. So best place is probably the website. So if you go on gogotelugo.com, so that's G-O-G-O-T-E-L-U-G-O.com, you'll get um, the uh, company email. Uh, you'll uh, most likely see my email, phone number. Um, so from there, you're more than welcome to contact. And um, I'm the one who normally receives all the emails. And so I will be in touch. Um, otherwise, on social media, I'm the most active on Facebook and LinkedIn, and it'll be under my full name, Azade Yaragi. Yes. And the last his last name is spelled Y A R A G H I. And I don't know if Michael, you're going to be posting this with um, any visuals, but yeah, um, there you have it. Actually, I, 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 your photograph will, will appear for sure. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> because you you sent me sent me that already so uh, sure. from from other interviews i've i've had uh, i've used used to photograph for that so um so people get to see what who and and how you look and everything so 
Right. Yeah. So if my, my name is in the title of the talk, then you can just Google my name. There aren't so many Azadeh Uragis in the world. <laughs> Very true. Very true. You are one of a kind. And <laughs> thank you for joining us today. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. All right. And stay safe, everyone. Okay. Bye for now. This show has been produced by Depictions Media. Please contact us at depictions.media for more information.